Okay, I've just showed you the very interesting fact that um, whether we're dealing with an electric circuit or this random journey on the tube, that solving for the either the voltages in the electric circuit problem or the uh, probabilities in the uh, tube traveling problem uh, amounts to solving for the potentials such that each potential is the average of the potentials that its neighboring nodes, the nodes that are connected to it by an edge, or adjacent nodes is another useful word. Um, well, that's given me an idea about something we could try um, to work out what these voltages are, or potentials, let's call it potentials, because they could be probabilities. In fact, look what I've done here. I've drawn the picture of the mini tube again. It's the same graph as our circuit. Um, and uh, look what I've done. I've set node 1 to be unit voltage. By the way, the numbers on this graph now denote the values of the potentials. Okay, So for the rest of this lecture, these aren't labels of the nodes. These are the values of the potentials. I want to emphasize that. And look what I've done. I've actually set node 1 to unit potential, and I've grounded at the moment all of the others. Now, these, this one and this one, I actually want to keep those at 1 and 0. OK, so I'm not going to change those. But look what else I'm going to do. Seems like a good idea. The value of this potential is not zero. It's supposed to be the average of the potentials here, here, and here, which are the ones that are connected to it by these edges, look. Now, if I add up, so here's what I'm going to do. Let me add up the potentials. So I've got 1 plus 0 plus 0, and I'm going to divide it by 3, because that gives me the average. OK? And then I'm going to update that value of the node. So that will then lead me to this. OK, so 1 plus 0 is 0. So this now, look, really is the average of this, this, and this. But of course, this value here is not quite correct. So let's do the next thing. Let's work out the average of this and this. Well, if I add a third to a 0, I get a third. And I divide by 2, because there are two edges, then I get this. And notice that I've left the third alone. OK, so that's OK. And now this one is the average of these two. OK, so I've been through both of the nodes where I'm trying to work out the potentials, and I've kind of updated them so that they're the average. But of course, now that I've updated this one, this one is no longer the average of its neighbors. So let me update this one now. So I'm going to kind of do the iteration again. So now what I do is I look at uh, 1, 0, and a 6 and add them up. What do I get? I get 7 sixths. Am I correct? And then you divide that by 3 to work out the average. And this is what you get. You get 7 eighteenths. It's the new updated value of this node potential. But of course, now that's messed up this one because this is no longer the average of 7 eighths and 0. But the average of that is clearly just 7 eighteenths divided by um, 2, which leaves me with this as my next update. But now that I've updated this, this is indeed the average of its neighbors, but this one isn't. So let me keep going. OK, so now I add up 1, 0, and 7 is 36, 7 over 36, and I divide by 3. Well, I've done that in the next picture, and it turns out that you get 43 over 108. Now, this one really is the average of its three neighbors, but this one has been messed up. So let's correct that one. And here's what you get for that. If I update that one now, it becomes, of course, it's just the average of this and this, which is a half of 43 over 108, which is 43 over 216. But of course, that's messed this one up. So let me go and uh, replace that by the average um, of the node of the uh, potential there, there, and there. And it turns out that works out to be 259 over 648. OK, and in one more step, this one is now messed up. So I'm going to make this one the average of this and this, which is clearly a half of 259 divided by 648, which leaves me with this, um, with this current uh, estimate of what my potentials at nodes 3 and 4 are. 259 over 648 and 259 over 1296. Actually, uh, now, of course, 
that's a, what we call an iteration. I'm kind of updating everything in iteratively to, to, and hoping that, as mathematicians say, hoping that it converges. Okay, but let's see, does it converge, at least in this, just in this experiment, this simulation? Well, if I just put this into my calculator, it turns out this is actually 0.39969. And this one, if I just put that in my calculator, gives me 1.9984. Well, I'm quite impressed with that because that's very close to the two-fifths that we're looking for. And this is very close to 0.2, which is, sorry, 0.2, which is, of course, one-fifth, which is what we're looking for there, we know from other methods, okay? This is a, a, a very interesting, this is a very interesting uh, new method of calculating it. It's interesting to see that there are lots of different choices of these, uh, ways of calculating this, um, these potentials, we've actually seen, if you think about it, we've seen three different methods. One, the first one was the linear algebra approach, using Scher complements and things like that. You know, based on the linear algebra and the fact that we know what the incidence matrix is and we can construct the Laplacian. We've also now seen this iterative method, iterative scheme, which I've called the method of relaxation. Okay? That was basically an iterative numerical method based on this observation that we realize that the potentials must be the average of all of the potentials that the adjacent nodes, the ones connected to them by an edge. And actually, think about it. Because we've seen this analogy with the, with the, the, the random journey on the tube, we've actually got a probabilistic approach to computing the very same potentials. Because remember, in a few, a few lectures ago, I pulled up MATLAB and I did some simulations of journeys around the mini tube and again I ended up with the 0.2 and the 0.4 for the probabilities they were in that particular problem but of course they're the same thing as these potentials we now know. So look at that, that's amazing. When you're a mathematician and you, you, you're studying a particular problem you see three completely different ways to just numerically compute uh, um, the answers to your problem, uh, you get very pleased, you get very excited at all the potential because of course these are very different ways to solve the same problem. And we're going to explore these uh, in what's up next.